<laughs> Welcome back, guys. Another episode of Talkman Tuesday. The first episode of 2022. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> oh, are you excited, Sawyer? I am first very episode. excited. It's it's going to be a great episode, obviously. I mean, we've grown so much over these last couple of years. 2022 is where we're going to pop off. Spotify deals in the future. I'm calling it. Boom. With that being said, <laughs> roll the intro. <laughs> Everybody's looking forward to the podcast, yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday, talk, man. Tuesday, everybody's looking forward to the podcast, yeah. Ooh. All right, first episode of 2022. Let's see. What do, what do you talk about to New Year's start off a whole year of podcasting? <laughs> New Year's resolution goals. Last week we talked about um, things, right? Yeah. So how Is are like goals going a little you? bit? I feel like it's lacking a tiny bit. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. What, what a great is. year. 2022 sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, we didn't record last week because I was sick, and that kind of ruined the whole um, working out. And it started off the year strong. Yep, the whole week without working out. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't start working out until yesterday. Today, mm-hmm. today, I said to take one more day too, just to make sure I was gonna do four for four. And hopefully, we'll see how next week goes. Well, better to feel 100% too, or closer to 100% before pushing yourself and then not being, I guess, fully (coughs) back, I guess, maybe, best way of saying it. Oh, gosh, you just coughed. Cancel the pod. (laughs) (laughs) Last week would have been a lot worse. It would have been like a cough every probably five minutes. And I was just like, guys... (laughs) When you cough, he would just look at you weird. Just like that. <laughs> at the store. I'm like, <laughs> it's amazing how many people came in with masks. And how many people, I've, I feel like I've heard more like people positive recently than ever mm. before. At least mm, people are actually talking about it. It's not just mm-hmm. like, who's positive, who's not. So, yeah. Watch out. Well, they said with it, too, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not going to be are you going to get it anymore? It's going to be, when are you going to get it? Because especially with the new strand, it's much easier to get than the previous ones were apparently. And so uh, since they're transmitted a lot easier, um, and like what the symptoms are, like you're, you're down and out for a day or two, and then you're usually like starting to recover and get back into it. They're like, it's basically going to be treated more so like the common cold um, basically. And so, The news is like, if you don't have it yet, just be prepared because you're most likely going to be getting it. Okay. There you go. That's why the CDC was more relaxed about the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Just because I'm not... There probably have been, like, some deaths from this variant, but I think it's a lot fewer deaths. It's just, there, like you said, there are more positives that are being gotten from it. Um, since people are just mm. getting it more, but again, yeah, still be safe with mm. it a little bit. Mm. Boom. Works out. Uh, yeah. Uh, so my past week was just being in bed, recovering. <laughs> and coughing. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah and once we, again. We weren't. Go for it. Oh, I was going to say, we weren't on our end. Um, yeah, the lag is kind of messing it up, the, the flow of it. But um, we were kind of down and out like two weeks ago. No, I guess a week and a half ago at this point. Um, we were kind of down and out a little bit. And I like it was just kind of one of those things where it was just all flu symptoms. Like, 
runny nose, congestion, things like that. And so we we're like, oh, we'll be safe. Mm. We went and we got a COVID test at, we got a PCR test because they didn't have any rapid tests available. And so uh, we got a PCR test, which takes a little bit longer. Usually they said three to four days to get it back. Mm -hmm. um, we took those two, I guess, last two Fridays ago. So not last Friday, but the Friday before is when um, we got that test taken. We still haven't gotten the results back. And if we were positive for COVID, our quarantine is already up at this point. And so it's just like, what's the point of taking that test if, mm -hmm. like, we don't even get the results back? <laughs> but Candace mm -hmm. is a part of a Facebook group here, and people were like, oh, have if you have like the results been delayed and people are like, yeah, I got mine at like the two week mark. It's like, well, what's the point of even taking the test? Like if you're feeling sick, just quarantine, don't even go to take the test. Just assume you're positive and then just wait those 10 days. Mm -hmm. That works out. Yeah. Um, but I'm annoyed. I didn't want to stick something up my nose just for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I figured, yeah, I figured if I would, I would be positive, they would just tell me the same thing. It's like quarantine. And then once, I never read the CDC guidelines, but I just heard that they're way more relaxed. And they're like, as long as you got a fever and it's been like five to 10 days after like, what, your fever, you should be good. Mm -hmm. it's like, so there's tons of videos of people being like, you want nurses to go back positive still? Like, yeah, it's not too bad now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but for reference, I never read the guidelines. I just heard about people making fun of the guidelines. Yeah. I mean, it's just wild how much they've changed, too. Which is, again, just the different strengths of the different variants and stuff like that. But it's I feel like I was actually talking with Candace about this the other day. It's one of those things where it's like people were annoyed when we first had to wear masks. And then when it started dying down a little bit, like a year and a half-ish into it, the people, like, the guidelines were getting much more, like, no restrictions, things were opening, all that stuff, and just because people were getting antsy and wanted to stop wearing the masks. And then people got a taste mm. of the good life by not having to wear their masks everywhere. And now that things are kind of ramping up a little bit again, people are just like, oh, I'm not going back to that. It's like, oh, shut up and put a mask on. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> we have no signs up for the mask, at, like, um, at the building, but everybody the majority of people are coming in with masks it's mm. crazy it's like what is going on and then this past week and yeah you, you can't like uh, it doesn't like go by like, 10 minutes until you hear something like with a cough because mm. it's been really cold lately so everybody has a cough and they even know it they don't want to cough because yeah. they know if you start coughing <laughs> people just look at you it's like Go home, man. Go home. Yeah, it's like even if you don't have it, like you don't cough in public anymore. It's like so <laughs> frowned upon now. <laughs> She's like, people get to get COVID. Like, yeah, you better have a mask. Or yeah. Cough. Oh yeah. Well, it's one of those yeah. things. It's like if I'm in the grocery store, like nine people in a row are wearing masks. Like I'm wearing my mask, but if I see one person that mm. does, isn't wearing a mask, like even if I need something down that aisle, I will wait until that person is like gone before <laughs> I go down because I'm like. I don't know what you're breathing in. I don't want to be around you. <laughs> but it's like, we just aren't kicking people out anymore just because I don't think it's like that high on the priority list as, as it used to be. I feel like it's just kind of like, it's very socially negative, I guess, to not wear a mask. And so like, they're like, you're just gonna have to deal with everybody glaring at you and stuff like that. But it's not like people are being refused access like they used to. Mm hmm That works out. Oh yeah. Random question. What's your breakfast of choice? What does Sawyer eat for breakfast? I don't eat breakfast. <laughs> um What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh I went well I will say, I'll I'll back that up. Um I randomly do get in breakfast kicks where I'm like, I need to eat something in the mornings, but usually I just have water and coffee. Um and so it's bad. Uh, but, but when I do eat breakfast, again, during my little kicks, I've got, uh -huh. I think it was in my first apartment that I had, 
um, I got this little, uh, like, breakfast sandwich maker. So you put an English muffin on the bottom, then you put a slice of cheese mm. on it, and then there's, like, a little contraption that comes down on top of it, and then you can crack an mm. egg on top of that, and then you put another English muffin on top of it, and then, like, it cooks everything together. And then, um, like, after, like, there's a light that goes off, and then you have, like, basically, like, a little McMuffin type of thing. And oh. so that's what I go for whenever I do decide Ooh. to eat breakfast. Uh-huh. Or Cocoa Pebbles. Love me some Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me of, like, the video of, like, some healthy um, topics. And one of them was, like, coffee is not breakfast. <laughs> hey, or, like, hey, they don't know me. It's not lunch. <laughs> but <laughs> see, that's my thing, though. Coffee is not lunch. <laughs> it's like, I won't eat, like, I won't eat breakfast. But then I'll snack throughout the day and, like, have a decent-sized mm. lunch. And so it's like, if I just mm. ate a breakfast, I'd probably cut out a lot of that unhealthy stuff that I just snack throughout the day. when I'm Because I'm, I'm hungry, obviously, that's what I'm eating. But, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's the life I chose as a snacker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, trying to get into changing my breakfast from, like, ramen noodles to, like, an omelet, but I'm like, that takes time. I'm like, what's something else that's quick? Like oatmeal. Cause I saw in um, Legends of Tomorrow that they eat oatmeal right there. <laughs> yeah. There so are some quick. good oatmeal recipes out there. Like, I like apple cinnamon oatmeal. If you can get some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it has to be flavored. I can't eat just oatmeal. Like, just normal Quaker oats or something with water. Like, I can't just mm -hmm. do that. Like, it has to have some sort of flavoring to it. And so I, I googled oats, and there's a bunch of oats. It's like yeah. companies who like specialize on all this nutritional, healthy um, things for oats. And I'm like, oh, I'm really debating like getting a month supply of something. And I'm like, am I actually gonna commit a month to eating oats? So it's just like the regular oats with a bunch of nutritional value, and you know the whole superfood type of thing, super oats. Um, <laughs> The only thing it doesn't come with bananas and strawberries and blueberries, which makes them look really good. Oh yeah! I just might get the oats buy, and get the buy your own and blueberries. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> which what makes you buy it even more is I can make content out of it, and I don't know why, but I love seeing that type of content. I don't know why, like make coffee, breakfast, like making your breakfast. I just find that so satisfying to watch. <laughs> like I should be doing that. <laughs> Do I actually do it? No, I just hit ramen noodles three minutes and I'm done. <laughs> but <laughs> if I would eat like oats and like actually prepare it and like make it look good, I think I just might do it for the content. <laughs> well, hey, props and to you. You have the, the patience to make it look nice and everything like that. I feel like I would make <laughs> one video of that and then be like, I just want my oatmeal at this point. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like a banana, like, like basically like a moon. Oh, like yeah. Strawberries, like all. <laughs> ah, and then I also am googling how to make homemade chai tea, which is like a really fast way of the chai concentrates already made. You just gotta mix it with um, oat, oat milk or whatever type of milk you want. Hmm. Which I've done that. Um, the other one you make your I like take a chai concentrate from scratch, which takes a little bit longer, probably like ten twenty minutes, and then. I think that's the both of them. Yeah. And then there's a fro froster? Fro frother. Frother. Oh, frother for Those like little, the. Yeah. That make the like milk, the top yeah. of the cappuccinos or whatever. <laughs> like the foamy part. Yeah. Yeah. And all these videos have different recipes. And I'm like, which one's right? Which one's wrong? And I'm like, it just, whatever you like the most. Because like yeah. one of them is just like, I'll make it fast. J concentrate, you could buy it already made and mix it with whatever oat milk or whatever, like 2% milk, whole milk, whatever you like, and then add um, this type of creamer. But then the other recipe didn't have the creamer. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you could add it if you want. Like, what? <laughs> so, uh, it's just an optional yeah. thing at that point, how, how creamy you want it, how milky you want it. <laughs> It's basically like oats. It's like you can have simple oats, but you can have so many different types of oats. 
And then oats mm-hmm. in itself are, yeah. So, you could see me making oats in the near future. Probably an omelet. Hopefully, probably for the content. Because I need to be posting more on TikTok. And then making chai latte at home until I get impatient and go to Starbucks for it. <laughs> 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 we'll see how long that lasts. That's even when it starts. So, well, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was asking you for. Like, uh, your what breakfast day are you food. on your, your push up thing? Mm-hmm. I skipped for like a week. So I was sick. Oh, so no. So now. Yeah. <laughs> day 37 out of 55. I would have been like day 43. But oh, well. I was like, should I just do all like five days um, and like space it out throughout the day? I'm like, no. I'm just going to. Be like I was sick, yeah, <laughs> and just continue. People will understand the rest. Of them. Have you seen yeah. the uh, the TikToks of the guy who he his TikToks are? I, I'm working out every day until Taco Bell brings back the stuffed grilled nacho, uh, and so he started doing that, and he's been doing it for like over 370 days or something in a row. And, like, he's uh-huh. lost a ton of weight from it. Uh, and Taco <laughs> Bell, it was, like, last week or something, I want to say, Taco Bell stitched his video with um, mm. a Taco Bell bag, and then they turned it around, and on, it was a receipt, and it said, at that guy's, like, username. And so people are like, Taco Bell, don't you be playing with that this guy's heart like that. And people are like, oh, my gosh, did it actually happen? And so I told myself if... <laughs> This guy actually brings back the grilled stuffed nacho, like for like, even like a week or something. I'm gonna go to Taco Bell to try it because why not? It's been gone for so long, <laughs> so he's he's kind of been doing something that's similar to what you're doing. But he was doing it for like a little cause in his mind. But you should look him up. It's it's pretty interesting just to see how much weight he's actually lost. What's his name? It's just like Taco Bell. I don't know. It's, I think it's like grilled stuffed nacho. Something. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Grilled. Grilled cheese burrito? Grilled stuff. No. Grilled no. stuffed. Oh, it's Kiero stuffed S T U F T nacho. Oh, grilled stuff nacho. Day three fifteen. Dang. <laughs> but like, he's on day three seventy three. <laughs> Total. But every once in a while, he'll do like a uh, before and after. Oh, if you scroll down his videos a little bit, day three sixty seven is the one that I'm talking about, where Taco Bell stitched it. But every once in a while, he'll do like a day one to now type of thing, and it's it's just crazy. He got one of his pinned ones, nineteen point seven million views. Day three fifteen. Oh yeah, that's his before and after. From day fifteen to day three fifteen. You just see it in his face. Like, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Some people are against Taco Bell bringing it back. They're like, this guy is looking so good now. Don't do it. Don't ruin his, <laughs> his journey. <laughs> could, could you imagine Taco Bell brings it back and he just gains all the weight back? <laughs> <laughs> that would be sad. That would be sad. <laughs> but hey, Taco Bell is what one of the healthiest fast food options. <laughs> How disgusting is that to think about? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, what are your options? I don't, so, oh, I don't remember the last time I've been to Taco Bell. It was when I still lived in the city because I tried to go to the Taco Bell. For all, this is BS. I tried to go to the Taco Bell that's closest to my house and I pulled up in the drive-thru, and the lady at the other end of, like, that that was working, she goes, mm-hmm. um, 
we're only accepting Grubhub orders or online orders. We don't take orders through the drive-thru. I'm like, what do you mean you don't take orders through the drive-thru? You're Taco Bell. You take orders through the drive-thru. So I haven't been back. So I don't remember the last time that I had it. It's been probably like eight months or so, which, again, not the worst thing in the world not to have Taco Bell, but that was like my go-to if it's like, oh, feeling super lazy, don't want to do anything. You know what? Taco Bell. <laughs> mm. I literally just had it this past weekend. <laughs> and... <laughs> and guess what happened? Guess what, what happened? <laughs> Indigestion. <laughs> oh, that's Taco Bell for you. That's how you know you got the good stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a quesadilla and they had the Nietzsche Lupa. Um, I forgot what it... I even, yeah, I even forgot what type it was, but it said new chalupa, and I'm like, oh, new chalupa, I'm gonna try it. Was it I like used to the, get full uh, with the, the grilled cheese one? Was like the cheese? Yeah, that one. That one. Oh, don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, uh, Saturday, I wasn't feeling so well, and I'm like, no. Um, I used to go for my aunt for like. It's basically like they must. My aunt massages your stomach so it goes down, hmm. and I'm like, I've been bugging her for like two weeks because I, I got indigestion like t- um, twice in like a really short time span, and I didn't want to bother her like a third time, so I just like I'm like I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm good. Just go down. <laughs> <laughs> I even got like a tea to make it go down, and like it flushed my stomach and everything, but I just was still like nauseous, so I still went. <laughs> Well, luckily she she's married with um uh, my uncle who also is very bad with indigestion. He gets it all the time. So mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, your uncle's the same way. <laughs> so she's become a master at this at this point. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah. Sometimes even though like it, it could go down, you still need somebody to like massage you, and then that's how like the nauseous goes away. And like my uncle like also relates to that. It's like mm-hmm. you just don't feel right, like. You feel like everything's processing slowly. Like, that's all I thought about. I'm like, yeah, I'm nauseous and I feel like everything's going slow. And I'm like, I cannot have things processing slow right now. People are getting pissed. <laughs> well, you need to just add that on your Tinder and Bumble profiles. And you need to put, need somebody to massage me during my indigestion. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't get you matches, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> I try to look up like videos like in English of like how would you say like massage stomach because um there's like techniques to like relax your stomach and um make yourself like go to the bathroom but I only found them in Spanish hmm. so I'm like what do you like have you heard of that like massaging for like helping easing dig- and digestion what do you call that yeah I mean, what, I guess it's not really for indigestion, though. I was going to say, Candace has, like, huh. this, like these scented oils and stuff like that, but that's, like, usually, oh. like, she's got, like, pain or something. And so, like, I've mm. had it when, like, my stomach just has been, like, a little bit nauseous or something like that. And, like, she's mm. got, like, this orange-scented candle, which I think it's more so, like, smelling. I don't think the oils actually do anything, but... Mm. I also don't like people touching me, like massaging, and so I probably want to be the target audience for looking up if these things do exist. <laughs> we had another aunt in California when I was growing up. That always happened to me. I would get indigestion and I'd be puking all day, and my mom would just take me there and miraculously be better after they massage your stomach. You'd go to the bathroom and like all your nauseous would go away. You mm. wouldn't feel nauseous. You feel great. I'm like, I don't know what they do, but they cure me. <laughs> but, but thank you. <laughs> yes. So I tried to massage myself. It didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, it somewhat worked out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping back. Um, so talking about your um, chalupa that you had, they also are coming out mm. or already have come out with. Wings at Taco Bell. Please don't get the Taco Bell wings. Um, that Why? just sounds disgusting, and that probably will make you <laughs> sick. Um, and two, 
we went to, um, when we were craving uh, Taco Bell and we couldn't get it, we went to this other place that's by us that's more kind of like, it's like Chipotle-esque type of thing, but they only sell tacos. They don't do burritos or anything like that. Um, and I tried mm. to get a Lengua taco, but they didn't have any. I was going to Snapchat you and all that stuff be like, I'm trying my first Lengua taco, and they, but they didn't have any. I was so bummed. I was like, I'm never going to have this courage again to try this. <laughs> I went for it. <laughs> what did Candace say when you try the Lengua taco? <laughs> well, we were, we were looking at the menu, and she's like, oh, that one says tongue on it. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's Angel's favorite. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm going to have to try this. <laughs> and then when I went up to the cash, re- cash register, um, I was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to do like a, a carnitas, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to do a lengua. And she goes, oh, we're all out of lengua. And I go, oh, and Candace goes, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she, good it in her was. Mind, in her mind, she's probably like, you're going to get sick if you eat this or something. <laughs> See, that's how good it was. It was sold out. <laughs> yeah, um, or they just haven't had it in a while because nobody orders it. Either one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very hard to like actually cook because it takes a while <laughs> to be that tender. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want a, a raw tongue served to me. Um, that would not yeah. be good. And because it is tongue, you have to have, like, have it frozen because <laughs> it doesn't mm. last very long. <laughs> I can I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you this. So, when Candace when I, Candace and I weren't feeling good, I thought it would be a good idea to start finding other hobbies and stuff like that. And I decided that Legos were going to be my new hobby. So I think I showed you these things. Candace got me these little guys over Christmas, and so they're like little little figures. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go big. And I got it. <laughs> what the story? A three thousand piece Lego treehouse. Oh, <laughs> it is the really cool. coolest little thing ever. But it took it took me a day and a half to, to put together. Like from when I, I woke up at. 1030 on Saturday and Sunday and literally just do this nonstop. And so I cranked oh. down this entire thing. And Candace that is like, so cool. you know the cats are going to knock that down and destroy it. And I'm like, I will destroy them if they knock this thing <laughs> down. <laughs> but oh, man. that was my weekend activities. And it's, it's oh, so calming cat. putting Lego together. Because it's just like they give you the instructions so it's difficult to mess up during during it and just kind of like mm. you zone out and you're just kind of building stuff. Those are like childhood dreams. <laughs> I know. I, I, was like, I, did was I wasn't I wasn't really into Lego growing up. Um and so I don't really know what made me want to to do it, but I'm glad I did. It's one of those things like I, I this got me for a little bit. Like, I'm good. If I get another Lego set, it's probably going to be, like, a smaller one or something like that. But I could see in a couple of months or something like that getting another big one just to, to build out. But they're expensive. Lego are expensive just because people are looking for hobbies and stuff like that. And a lot of the stuff that they do are based around, like, movies like Star Wars and Marvel and things like that. And so as all of those things are gaining popularity, it's like... Mm. It kind of bubbles down to to all this stuff too, and so it's wild. But yeah, just wanted to share that with you. And so yeah, for all of my uh, all of our listeners, I should say, who can't see what I popped up, hop on over to the YouTube channel, uh, and you can see what I just bragged about. <laughs> it's really cool. It was. I was like, it was a treehouse. It was so cool. Because the whole the whole color scheme in my room is like brown and green, so it worked. I had to go for it. Oh no! No! It's currently lagging. We we'll get it back. We got it back. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. What were you saying? Sorry. 
Oh, I was just saying the whole color scheme in my room is brown and, brown and uh, green, so it worked. Uh, but but no, I mean, besides that, I think the last time we talked about Purdue, Purdue was ranked number one in basketball, mm. and that lasted mm. until the next game when they Come lost, on. and then they got bumped down to three, <laughs> and then they lost to Wisconsin recently, so now they are seven. So, oh. woohoo. They are still projected to be a two seed come March. So, for March Madness. So, we'll see if that holds. Monday, next Monday? Is it next Monday? For or what? Is, yeah, next Monday. They're playing uh, Illinois. Illini. Mm. Illini, Illinois. So, they were Illini. supposed to play Michigan today. But it got postponed for some reason. I'm assuming probably COVID related stuff. But Illinois, I'm not sure. Is Illinois good this year? Ranked 25. Uh, we're ranked 7. We'll kick so. their butt. Even though we lost to 24 <laughs> ranked Wisconsin. I, I was about to say, we, we lost to worse than Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, the worst part, the two teams that we've lost to have been conference games. And so it's like, we're just screwing ourselves over. Like, come on, guys. They're not this is ranked. something that doesn't affect the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not ranked. How can we lose them? Like, I'm like, does that mean the whole ranking thing is off? <laughs> no. It's always so up in the air. Number, number five, USC, lost to unranked Stanford today. So after this week, we'll, we'll get ranked up. We'll go up a little bit, but... It's like you can only take those for the grain of salt. Like, unless you're number one, then you're like, "Oh, these are the the truest rankings ever." <laughs> but <laughs> and then the, the mentality of the players too, because they probably think that too. And mm-hmm. get the butts kicked. Mm-hmm. Like the number one seed, it's like, "Oh, we're number one. We should be good." And then the unranked team's like, "We could beat the number one seed." Yep. And that's what actually happens. Yep. <laughs> and then. The first time we were number one seed, um, the unranked team goes, this is the first time we beat a number one ranked team. <laughs> and we're like, oh, why does that have to be against <laughs> us? <laughs> Just give all the glory to them at this point. We had it for like less than a day. <laughs> ah. Ooh, for our CrossFit class, we had, um, we were, we had to hold uh, a sandbag for like a minute for like three rounds. And one of the examples the coach gave was like, just imagine your kid doesn't want to walk and you're going through the mall. And I'm like, I'm at this point in my life now. <laughs> I'm like, that's not healthy. Give me something more relatable. <laughs> Imagining I, you're carrying your, your camera equipment to <laughs> something that you want to photograph or videograph. <laughs> I took my cousin to CrossFit, and she goes, I'm working out with middle-aged people now. I'm like, damn! <laughs> I'm like, we're not that old. That hurts. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> At least she, somehow her boyfriend got all of a sudden interested in doing CrossFit. And this is doing CrossFit at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> and, so, we might be having two high schoolers join us to CrossFit. CrossFitting with middle-aged people. <laughs> At 5.30 yeah. in the morning. What time does yeah. school start for them? Like, 7? 38? <clears throat> I think around 8. I forgot what time she said, but yeah. 7.48-ish. Hmm. But... Um, I came back from one CrossFit class in the afternoon, and she was like, "Can I can I try CrossFit?" And I'm like, "You you gonna wake up at five in the morning?" She's like, "Yeah, okay sure. then, <laughs> I'll pick you up." <laughs> like, "Yeah, I'll pick you up," but like, let's see if you want to wake up. I didn't believe she was gonna wake up. <laughs> She's a high schooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I woke up like in the last possible second that I needed to. Like, I especially like in high school. Like, no, give me my sleep. Mm-hmm. How, how nice was it, by the way, back when we were in school, where the only thing you had to really worry about was getting good grades. 
And like if you had extracurriculars and stuff like that. But it's not like now we have responsibilities. Responsibilities suck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, did you get the um, uh, the new book that Dave Ramsey came out with? Then came out with today. So did should I be get giving it? a link. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> uh, you sent uh, me another book. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> the reason I got the first book was because it came with like a bundle and I thought the bundle mm. was too good to pass up so I'd get it to my closest friends <laughs> so the bundle was <laughs> it was a good deal that I couldn't pass up for you guys <laughs> I'm thinking that you just think I don't know how to control my finances um, so I'm taking personal offense to them <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, they, they like give you put on all these goodies so you could pre-order it so they can it, it could have the number one bestseller like title for the rest mm-hmm. of like um for how long they sell it so this is the new book that they came out with so with if you pre-ordered it you got the original book the total money makeover the audiobook for that and then plus um a live show for some other thing the audiobook of the new book and the physical book of the new book, which is mm, Million Baby Steps Millionaire. Which, if you listen to this podcast, it's basically the similar things. It's just more of like his investment side of like, yes, the total money makeover is like how to get rid of debt. And then this part is like, okay, once you're out of debt, how should you be investing and like what should you be doing? Like budgeting and living below your means and whatnot. And just be, be more intentional. You don't have to be like gazelle intense. So like, uh, you're just going to eat rice and beans until you pay off all your debt. <laughs> uh, as delicious as rice and beans are. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> They're really delicious. <laughs> um, we had a cousin who came back from, who came from Guatemala to like visit us. And we took him to like a Mexican restaurant. The dish comes out and he sees like rice and beans in the plate. He's like, Beans? At a restaurant, <laughs> and we were like, "Yes, rich people eat beans here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my other cousin did like a similar comment. He was like, "Yeah, I noticed that like people who want to get into like who are, uh, really want to eat healthy, they eat beans." It's like in Guatemala, it's like it's very cheap, so you don't really have an option. And yeah, beans is like your go-to. <laughs> it's like ramen noodles for a college kid. It's like Guatemala. It's like beans are like go-to. <laughs> Rice and beans. <laughs> so, <laughs> he thought it was very weird that we actually went to a restaurant to get beans. <laughs> yeah. They're like, why we could have gotten this anywhere? What was the point of this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so my sister was very hungry and she went to the airport and got pasta there. It was like a 30 or 40 bucks pasta. <laughs> and like huh. the coworker was like, pasta is like a dollar at the store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm just very hungry. There yeah, wasn't that, that many point, options. Eat whatever you can. Like, you're not picky. <laughs> that's, that's the worst thing about airports. Like, they can charge ridiculous amounts because they know, like, you, where else are you going to go? If you want this, you're going to eat it here. <laughs> you have to be there for like two hours beforehand. And you want something else, you have to get out and then back in. Such a hassle. And Whoa. then you want to drink? Oh, my goodness. I mean, whenever I go to the airport, I have to get at least one beer. Like, I'm not going to go <laughs> to the like, airport and not get a Blue Moon. And that's the other thing. It's like, it's so relaxing to do that. But then, like, with beer, you know exactly where you could have gotten it. At the store. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're like, I saw you pour it. I get that same bottle. <laughs> it's not even like cooking where, like, you could just blame it on... Maybe they have a nice recipe or something. <laughs> but with Blue Moon, it's like... No. I won't. Skip those bottle. <laughs> it is super relaxing. It's like, oh. <laughs> Ooh. Alright, sorry. Angel. If someone asked you to be your apprentice and learn all that you know, what would you teach them? 
the art of seduction. Um, <laughs> you were good at that. In theory, you were great at that. <laughs> in theory, maybe. I would talk the talk and have them talk the talk, but in reality, I'd be like, I'm not doing that. Like, oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I give all these tips that I wouldn't be able to back up on my own end. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like that saying of, like, when they were asked professors, it's like those who can't do teach. You've been great at that. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> so yeah, oh, you give me tips. I, I help anybody. Like they call me like the the love doctor. That was weird. Um, <laughs> but the, I feel like I feel like I could give decent advice, like how to talk in different situations with people. Like, well, worked out for me. Mm. You're great at that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you gave me tips for like scenarios, like you were even like joking around, but that's actually a good line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though I, I never like did it, a I'm lot like, of it comes. That's good too. <laughs> like no, a lot of it just comes down to, especially like meeting new people and stuff, is realizing that like everybody's the same amount of awkward. It's just who's more comfortable in that awkwardness type of thing. And so it's like, if you have like that false little sense of confidence, like now I can navigate this. I feel like that goes a longer way, especially like filling in doles and conversations, stuff like that. When you first meet somebody, I feel like that's a big piece of it. Like if if people struggle sometimes with just meeting new people, I feel like that's where it is. They just don't know how to navigate the new conversation. So it's kind of going in there knowing they're just as awkward about this as I am, but we can get through this. Mm Hmm. See, we need to get an audience to send us um, questions about their dating life, and then we'll have you answer them. If we're turning into a dating podcast. I like it. That's what 2022 is. Um, Sawyer will help you in all of your relationships, no matter how big, how small the problems. If it's a financial stuff, we'll just navigate that toward Angel. Uh, but anything else related to relationships, I'm the go-to. So let's do that. Guys. Yeah, I love hearing those, like, um, scenarios of podcasts. I'm like, how did this even happen? And then, like, they break it down for you. I was like, this is what I would do. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. (laughs) What about you? If you could be the go-to for anything, what would it be? I just, I don't know why I just went with, like, how to be happy. Hey, there you go. Is your family alive? <laughs> You're good. <laughs> You're yes, good to go. be happy. What if something answers no to that question? <laughs> like, oh, snap. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> <sighs> Who do you love? Who's, like, your closest ones that aren't necessarily blood-related, but they would be considered family? And I'm alone. If they're alive, then, like, oh, snap. Um... What are your hobbies? <laughs> like, uh, we gotta find you some friends who are gonna be in the family. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta find you somebody to talk to. Like, yeah. But no, I could see. Yeah. I could see you being well, how to be happy. Well, it's like that whole um, experiment that I did, like, what makes people live the longest. And it wasn't like money or like their careers or. Um, how healthy you ate. It had some factors of it, but it wasn't too different. It didn't differentiate that much, but like the biggest factor was like, how involved are you in the community? By involved is like, how many people do you talk to a day? And I just chatted up. I'm like, how, mm-hmm. how can that simple thing of like, how many people are you connected to in sort of ways of speaking makes you live longer? And that's how like mm-hmm. the small little Italian town had the most centurions, like people over a hundred in mm-hmm. their town. And it was like, is it the pasta that they eat? Or like their <laughs> uh, eating habits? It's like, no, it's like, talk to people. <laughs> yeah, that sense of belonging. <laughs> that's that's a huge piece to it. Yeah. Just like, because, because then that, like you said, that goes into the sense of community and everything like that, where you feel like, okay, I'm happy because I know everything around me and all. I can see that. Yeah, like human connection. 
and you can like relate to people. It's like we're all gonna go through it. It's like life is a roller coaster. It's like it's mm-hmm. never all time high or like never all time low. It's like there's mountains and valleys. And then when you talk to people, you go through like their highs and lows and realize that's like that's part of life. Mm-hmm. It's not like when you're down in the slumps and you're all alone. And it's like this is only me type of stuff. But mm-hmm. it's like. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, that just gives you something to think about. I like that. I need to join clubs. I need to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. All right. What is something that is really popular now, but in five years, everyone will look back on and be embarrassed by? Mm. the only things that are coming to my mind and like not necessarily I don't think they're necessarily true or anything but I I could maybe see and I, I don't mean to hurt you with this one like, I could see, like, NFTs kind of being one of those things where, like, if it dies out really fast over a certain amount of time, people would be like, why did we do that type of thing? Why did I buy this ape online because it looked like a pixelated cartoon or stuff like that for that much money? And so I can see, because everything has its max. It's not like the prices are going to keep going up and up and up on all that. So I can maybe it's possibly. It's definitely going to happen. Yeah. It's but definitely I mean, going to happen. Can, like, this is no question about it. It's definitely yeah. going to happen. <laughs> I, I can see that yeah. being one of those things that people are like, why did I do that? But, the, the question after that is like, if it's going to go up after that, like down mm-hmm. um, valley type part, and that's mm-hmm. whether or not it's actually going to like come out or not. Mm-hmm. Like similar to like the, st- uh, the dot com bubble. It's mm-hmm. like <laughs> everything crashed. It's like, what? <laughs> these companies aren't really worth that much amount of money. I was like, no, <laughs> the, the theory was great. Yes. Yeah. In theory, it, it, it could help a lot of people, but the people, it takes a lot of effort to make it like happen one and two. Now, if you want to go through that effort, they need a yeah. very strong why to do that. <laughs> and, Cause those NFTs, a lot of them are basically companies and a lot of them is basically like people buying stocks from them. Yeah. And so their mission statement or like what they call the roadmap is like what they want to do, what they're going to do. And which in theory sounds great. In actual execution, mm-hmm. takes a lot of effort and work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and now there's like a, uh, I saw something where somebody created like, like a neighborhood type of thing, like a city and people can buy properties on the city block and stuff like that. And it's so like, they're trying to build out mm-hmm. this town. And like, that's kind of something it's like, what? So you can look back and be like, oh, I bought one spot on this town. It's like, what are you going to do with that though? Like, are you going to sell your spot to something? Maybe, but it's like, there's a lot of these things that, Again, sound great in theory, and if like they're all working out, great, great, great. But I mean, you're you're banking on a lot. Yeah, and then it's like, is it going to be California or is it going to be Montana? (laughs) 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 Or is it is it all going to be Montana? (laughs) It's like, yeah. Sorry, sorry about Montana, (laughs) but it just like I just went to state that I should not think about. Montana's. You don't think about Montana? Wow. <laughs> sorry, all of our Montananians. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But when Montana comes up, what do you think about? I think <laughs> the heartland of America. I think really down to the core, strong individuals who fight for what they believe in. That's what I think of Montana. <laughs> I think of I'm America so when I think of Montana. Montana. But- <laughs> Angel thinks that you're just dirt. He thinks that you're just mud on the side of a road. I think there's... <laughs> it's the Midwest. <laughs> is, it, is it even the Midwest? 
I don't even know. Yeah, that's Montana's in the Midwest. <laughs> Montana's 100% in the Midwest. <laughs> I'm going to go look at it. I'll, I'll be honest, though. Now. I don't think I know anybody from Montana. Not that like, I ask everybody that I meet where they're from, but I don't think it's come up in conversation where somebody's been like, yeah, I'm from Montana. Looking up Montana. I don't know where it's at in the map. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> oh, okay, found it. It's next it's... to North Dakota. I guess is that, that helps. Would that, that be that really helps? <laughs> <laughs> Screw North Dakota too. <laughs> well, uh, maybe they're technically in the mountain time range because they're by Colorado and Wyoming. You know, you should have said Wyoming, not Montana. Stop bashing on <laughs> Yeah, Wyoming might be up there, too. By up there, I mean, like, states that don't get a lot of recognition or you don't hear much about. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, if, if you just look around, if this is, has turned into just bashing Montana, but if you just look around Montana, like, Helena is obviously, like, their capital, but, like, you don't hear anything about Helena. There's a reason why there's no sports teams out of Montana. Like <laughs> Montana, you kind of got the short end of the stick. <laughs> what popular yeah, came from Montana? Like fun facts about Montana. Yeah, let's do fun facts <laughs> about Montana. Let's help Montana. There's, these aren't fun facts. <laughs> Oro y plata. Oro y plata, yeah. Ooh. Fun fact. Um, darn it. So I found out in Spanish the slang term for like, well, I knew the slang term for like work in Spanish was chamba. So when people would be like, where are you going? I'm going to the chamba. And people would be like, that basically means like you're going to work. And I never realized like why they said that. But apparently, um, when back in the day, I don't know how long ago, but like back in, um, who knows how long, long time ago, <laughs> um, some immigrants would go to the chamber. <laughs> yes, yeah, some point in the past, uh, immigrants probably mostly the majority of them like Mexicans would go to the chamber of commerce, like Latinos in general, um, would go to the chamber of commerce and sign up, so then they get called to work. That's how you would find work. So huh. you would go to the Chamber of Commerce to find work and put yourself on the list and then um, get work. So when they would ask you, like, where are you going? I'm, they wouldn't be like, I'm going to the, the, that ch- chamber. I'm trying to, like, be Spanish about, like, the <laughs> Chamber uh, hey, chamba commerce. of Commerce. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're like, I'm going to the Chamba. I'm like, what? Huh. And it's so ingrained in, like, I'm basically putting, like, the Mexican, like, Latin culture, like, the immigrant culture, that Chamba means work. It's so ingrained that, like, I didn't even know Chamba was short for Chamber of Commerce. What? That's interesting. (laughs) It's like if you're just having a conversation with somebody, somebody might just be like, yeah, I'm going to a Chamba. And it's like, oh, you're you're heading to work. Okay, sounds good. Like, see you when you get back. Interesting. And people were like, it's so ingrained that people don't realize it was, like, it it was short for Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. And... I guess people still kind of do it now for, like, the business owners that they want to, like, network or whatnot for the Chamber of Commerce, but it's not necessarily a list to, like, find work. And they go to the Chamber of Commerce to find work, and then they would be on their merry way. So that was fascinating. So now yeah. I'm going to ask my oh, dad. I, like that. I didn't know that. That's where really did cool. the origin come from? From Chamba? And get his, like, reaction? Because my dad... Even though he may not know it, know it, he makes it up. <laughs> and I have Google. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious. About He's going to give you with. some, like, completely out there, yeah, thing. <laughs> I'm going to have it all on video. Oh, yeah, he's going to be like, oh, Champa was dance, and so we were, like, dance our way to get the paycheck, and so that's why we say we're going to dance to get to work. Or something like that. That, you're that, like, that is something no. you would say. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. Darn it. All right. The other uh, question of the day. The I only guess. question of the day that I can think of is, are you from Montana? And just see who says yes. <laughs> from oh. Montana. Ooh. Um, okay, another thing, something that's really popular now, but in five years, everyone will look back on and be embarrassed by. I'm not sure, like, necessarily embarrassed by it, but, like, the the hype, I feel like, might go down. Not necessarily, I guess, um, there's, like, a really good hype on the Peloton bike. Kind of like, mm. I think, what CrossFit was, like, a few years ago, like, where the hype was between CrossFit. Dude! You have a Peloton bike? <laughs> it's, not, well, it's not a Peloton. It is not a Peloton. <laughs> There's, like, so much hype around it. Like, I have friends um, or, um, who, like, are doing it. I'm like, it's, it's like, what CrossFit used to be, like, a few years back. Or, like, the hit thing. Wow. Yeah. So, I think that's... I mean, the, the wild it's... thing with Pelotons, though, is that you need a membership. Um, in order to do it, it's like, you, you buy the bike, but then you have to pay twelve ninety nine. Um, a month after that, just for like the basic membership to join the classes and stuff like that. So like, in order to use the bike for what it is, like you have to keep on paying them. Mm-hmm. I guess it's wild to me. Yeah, I actually actually know that because I actually looked up the things too. <laughs> oh, that no. looks cool. I might want to do that. <laughs> and then yeah, I saw the same thing. And I'm like, what? I'm yeah. paying for like this membership? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, that Candace wanted one. Um, or she was thinking about uh, it, and I was like, Candace, we have a gym membership. Like, you don't ride the bike at the gym, and so like, I was pushing back, and then I, I finally caved. But I'm like, we're not. <laughs> if it's too expensive, we're not doing that because we have bikes at the gym that we don't go to. <laughs> it's experience, and it's like cool now. It's like cool, go. <laughs> they make it look really cool too. With those videos, I'm like, <sighs> oh yeah. They they know how to uh, do their marketing. <laughs> you got both of us to look into Peloton bikes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but no, we can make that the uh, the question of the day. Um, in five years, what's something that we do now that we might look back on and laugh just to get what people's thoughts are? That could be a good one. Um, and so let us know what you guys think, whether it's something activity-oriented, um, like the Peloton or, or something along those lines, or whether it's something more financial-focused, like NFTs, cryptocurrencies. I don't want to be giving you guys the answers to the question of the day. So um, just let us know what you think is going to be in five years' time, something that we all look back on and laugh that we were actually doing it. Uh, and so you can let us know the answer that, that you're thinking of in the comment section if you are listening to us on YouTube or if you are um, listening to us through one of our podcast platforms. You can always talk to us through TalkmanTuesday at gmail.com and let us know your answers through there. Any, I guess, reasonings or stories behind what you are thinking. Um, and we will highlight some of the, the good answers next week. Uh, but as always, if you guys have anything that you want us to talk about next week, or if you want us to, I guess, highlight something or whatnot, let us know or anything to improve on. Cause we're always trying to get better audio experiences for you guys. Um, this week's topic about uh, Taco Bell was actually brought to us by Teresa. So, Teresa, thank you very much for having us talk about Taco Bell, everybody's favorite fast food chain. Uh, but we will talk with you guys more next week. Hopefully, everybody's 2022 is off to a fantastic start. Uh, but as always, in the meantime, stay safe, social distance. Um, unless you are vaccinated, then go give somebody a hug and tell everybody that you love them. But we will talk with you guys next week. It lagged for a bit. No! <clears throat> I think he was at the end of it. She so said, stay safe, social distance. Now I'm lagging. No. Uh, Angel crashed. Uh, so it's just be here. <laughs> we will talk with you guys next week. Peace. Thank you guys. <laughs>